In this video, I'm gonna teach you all about functions and their parameters. Also how you can validate the arguments that you've been provided in your function in order to make sure that someone doesn't use your code incorrectly and that it throws errors at the right time and at right places. I'm also gonna talk about a few other things that will be really good for you to learn throughout your coding career. I'm a senior software engineer and I've been programming for more than a decade now. Most of my experience has come from looking at my code that I wrote previously and learning how to make it a lot better and also learning from my mistakes and naturally from listening to other people. So by the end of this video, you have a really good understanding about functions, their arguments, how to validate them, and also how to make sure that people don't use them incorrectly. This will also prepare you to write clean code ready for unit testing in the future. So without any further ado, let's get started. So let's go ahead and write a simple function that takes two parameters, then outputs the value of these two numbers when added together. It's a super simple function, but it's a good starting point for us to go from. Let's go over to Visual Studio Code and write this super easy function. So as mentioned, we're gonna write our function and it's gonna be called add, and it's gonna take two parameters. And then inside of this, we are simply just gonna say console.log, and then in here, we're gonna use backticks and say the sum if I can write it correctly, sum of um, then num1 plus uh, num2 equals and then sum. And in order to have sum, we need to say then sum equals num1 plus num2. And we're missing a back tick here. So now that we've written our function, we actually have to call it in order to see uh, what it does. Let's go ahead and do this now. Calling the function is as simple as saying then add and then five and seven. So we just say add, we open in the brackets and say five comma seven. Five is then num one comma seven means seven is then num two. Now that we've done this, let's go into the terminal and run this file so we can see what the output is. Okay, so in the terminal, all we have to do is say node and then the file name is called add. Uh, .js, we run it, and as you can see here, the sum of five plus seven is equal to 12. Super, super simple, and as expected. Now I can hear all of you saying, wait a minute, David, that add function didn't add anything. All that function did was output some string to the console. It was completely useless. And yes, it was completely useless. And this is the whole idea of single responsibility, and also naming your functions correctly based upon what they do. This function, what we had, was named totally incorrectly because it didn't add anything. All it did was output the sum to the console. So let's go ahead and fix everything with this function to name it correctly to what it actually does. So let's now name this function rather than add to output uh, sum to console. Whoops. And we'll rename this once again here. And we're not even going to bother running this in the terminal because it is completely useless anyway. So now let's actually move on to writing the add function correctly and using it correctly as well. Okay, so once again, let's write the add function. And this, the add function, as previously discussed, takes two parameters, num1 and num2. And what we do know that we have to do in the function is to return the sum of those two parameters. Now before we do this, let's write a description above our function to make sure we tell ourselves what the action is and what the single responsibility of this function is and for other developers to know what it does. So just above, let's just say returns the sum of the two, of the two uh, arguments provided. This at least now gives us a good understanding of what we've got to execute with inside of this code. Now, this is a very simple example of adding, but it's very good practice if you do it every single time, because whilst you're writing your code, you know you look at the, the description that you've already written and make sure you only do what it says there and you fulfill that as well. So let's go ahead and write this simple statement that we need to write. And as expected, num1 plus num2 and this is it. Now let's go and use this function correctly as we expected. So to do this let's create num1 const is equal to 5, create num2 const is equal to 7 and then we'll say sum is equal to then add num1 num2 and this time we can now output um, what was expected before. So back ticks the sum of uh, num1 
plus num2 equals sum. And once again, let's run it in the terminal to see what it outputs. And as you can see, it outputs exactly the same thing, but this time we've used the code correctly. It's always good coding practice to make sure that you name functions correctly based upon what they do, and also describe them using documentation above that function so other developers don't have to look at your code to know exactly what it does. Now in this situation, the add function name is kind of explicit and we kind of know what it's going to do already. But once again, it is good code and practice to give a short description of what that function does and what it returns. This next topic is slightly advanced, but super easy to learn. And if you can grasp this from the beginning as a junior developer, you will go so far. So really take note of what I'm gonna say right now, is try writing pure functions all the time. Now the add function that we wrote is an example of a pure function. A pure function is something that no matter how many times you call it, it will always give the same result. So here, if we give five and seven as the parameters, it will always give 12 as a result, no matter how many times we call it. A pure function must not have any side effects also, which means that it cannot output to the console, it cannot do any network requests, it cannot do anything. It means that input in, input out, and it's always exactly the same. And there is nothing else that's going to happen apart from that one thing that you've said. That is a pure function. Essentially, you never have to test a pure function as well, although it's really simple to test pure functions. So whenever you're writing a function, firstly think, is it pure? And second, is it single responsibility? Is it only doing one thing? Now, in order to describe a single responsibility function, the best way to do it is by describing the actions that it does. And if you see that it has more than one action, then it has more than one single responsibility. Once you grasp this idea, you will then start moving up from a junior developer into a developer. And over time, because you can start critiquing other people's work, you'll notice when it breaks the single responsibility ruling and or if it's not pure, okay? Any good developer will try and break their own code. You're probably asking me, how can you do this and why would you do it? To explain this a little bit better, let's go ahead and call our add function without any parameters this time to see what it actually returns and what is the outcome of it. Okay, so let's just comment out any other uh, things that we've done already so we don't get anything to the console. And this time we'll just console.log and we'll just say add, that's it. We are expecting for the add function to return a number, but because we haven't given it any input, it can't give us any output that is actually going to be a number. Let's go to the console now to see what it gives us. And as you can see, it says NAN. This means not a number. This is because it hasn't got anything to add. So it's saying the result is not a number. So let's talk about how we can protect our function from being called without the correct number of parameters and also without the correct type of parameters as well. So let's go back over to Visual Studio Code and rewrite our add function. So what we want to check in here is first of all is that the argument's length is not equal to two. If this is not equal to two, then we want to throw an error because we can't go on any further and we want our code to stop being executed because the developer using our code is using it incorrectly. And why should it be our fault that they use our code incorrectly? So we can do this now by saying throw new error and say the add function that whoops the add function requires two parameters. And there we go. So now we know that we are protecting our function from um, being called without two parameters or with being called with more than two parameters. So let's go ahead and execute our code once again to see what it outputs. And as expected, you see down here, it says the add function requires two parameters and the code will not be executed any further. So now that we have done this, let's have a quick look at what the arguments variable is, if you haven't seen this already. So let's just uh, say here, arguments is then arguments here. And we'll just comment out this throw so it doesn't um, fill up all of the console. As you can see now, we've console logged an object which has, in the first situation, um, two parameters, five and seven. That was when the method was called correctly. And the second time the add a function was called, it was called without any parameters. For that reason, the argument object doesn't have any properties inside of it. 
So this is a really useful way that you can validate the type of arguments that you get and the quantity of them as well. So let's now go ahead and validate the arguments that we've been given to make sure one, that it is actually a number and two, that it is actually a numeric number as well, meaning it's not in quotes because that would give us a different result. So let's do that now. Okay, so let's get rid of our arguments first of all. There we go, and we can uncomment this. So the next thing that we want to do is, um, now that we know num1 and num2 are actually there, we don't have to use arguments anymore. So we can say first of all that um, we want to check that num1 is actually a number, first of all. And so if it is not a number, then we are going to throw an error here. So we're checking that it's not a number. And we will say then if uh, num2 is also not a number, then throw an error as well. And the next thing that we want to do is say type of num1 yeah, is not equal to number. This means that if num1 num or num2, once we wrote the code, are a literal number, as in they're in quotation marks, this is not a number. This is a string and the plus sign will use it differently because it, it will be concatenating the two values together rather than adding the two together. So we need to make sure that what is given as num1 and num2 are actually numbers and not literal numbers. And we say also then type of um, num2 is not equal to number. And in here, we can then just say, throw new error, each parameter must be numeric, if I can spell it correctly, there we go. All right, so now we have, if it's not a number, num1, throw an error, or if it's not a number, num2, throw an error, or if type one, if type of num1 is not equal to number, or if type 2 num is not equal to a number, then throw an error. So let's go and run, so let's go ahead and run the code once again. And as you can see here, the, the add function requires two parameters. Good stuff, let's give it two parameters this time. And first we'll say 7 and then 5. So now it will pass the test, it's got two parameters, but we've now given it a literal 7 rather than a numeric 7. So let's go ahead and run the code once again. And as we can see, it now says each parameter must be numeric, meaning that we've passed the two parameters and now we know that one of the parameters has, is numeric and the other is not. So let's fix this once again and say add 7 and 5 and run the code in the console once again. And as you can see, we get 12. So now we've fully protected our add function to make sure it's got the right type of um, parameter and the right number of parameters as well. So we've, so we've basically created a safe function that we can use. Trying to force your application to crash is good practice. When you write an application, you always need to make sure which part of my code that I write can force your application, your mobile application, whatever, to then crash. And why will it crash? And can you protect your code from crashing too? Now, if you forced a user to enter a number into a text field or something like that, you need to make sure in this situation it is only numeric. If they do type in any other character that is not a number in that text field, you need to make sure that you don't allow that to be entered or you give some form of information to say it, it's not gonna work. Any button that is going to allow for that addition to work, you need to protect it before it happens. Always make sure that you program defensively before that add function is being called. And every single time you do this, then do it defensively once again until you know you've got completely clean code. Writing clean code is always going to help you. So I would really highly advise is always try to learn how to write clean code. And if you don't know how, then ask someone else as well. This has really taught you about the fundamentals of writing functions with parameters. The main thing I'm trying to teach you in this video is how to write clean code. And when you do write a function, make sure you've got single responsibility in your mind, try and keep it pure, and also make sure that you try and break your code every single time. And once you have finished writing your code, clean it up, document the code as well, make sure other people understand what the variables mean and understand what the function does as well. I've been writing code for many, many years now and I've written some real bad code and some really good code too. But you can only write good code by learning from your bad code and I hope that you've learned something in this video. If you have, then please think about giving it a like. It really does help my channel. 
Now, if you are interested in learning other parts of JavaScript or just general programming, then please check out my channel because I have over 300 videos about all different types of topics of programming, whether it's PHP, JavaScript, if you want to create a website using HTML and CSS, whether you want to configure a, um, a Linux server, and so many other things. So if you do find a video that you want to watch, then super awesome. If not, there'll be a video on the screen at the end of this video, which I suggest that you should watch. But before we do that, remember, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and if you do want to be notified when I upload any new video, make sure you tap the notification bell as well. With that said, thank you very much for watching. This is now the end of the video. There is a video on the screen, which I think is good for you. So I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.